Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. So we've been talking about a lot about Langsmith evaluations. And recall the four major pieces. You have a data set, you have some application you're trying to evaluate, you have some evaluator, and then you have a score. Now, one of the things that we've seen very consistently is that users want the ability to modify or to correct scores from the evaluator. Now, this is most true in cases where, we talked about this quite a bit previously, you have an LLM as a judge as your evaluator. So we kind of talked about different types of evaluators. You can use human feedback. You can use heuristic evaluators. LLM as judge is one in particular that's very popular for things like RAG and really any kind of like string to string comparisons. LLM as judge is really effective. There's a lot of great papers on this, but we know that LLMs can make mistakes. And in particular, in the case of judging, you know, oftentimes they may not capture exactly the nuanced kind of preferences that we as humans kind of want to encode in them. So we're going to talk today about a few ways you can actually correct this and incorporate human feedback into your evaluator flow. Now I'll show you um, one of the most popular applications for LMS Judge Evaluators is RAG. So if we go down here, we can look at, remember, there's a bunch of different ways to use LMS uh, as judges within a RAG pipeline. You can evaluate the final answers. You can evaluate the documents themselves. Um, you can evaluate, you know, answer hallucination relative to the documents. So we're going to show today about um, how we can set up an online evaluator for RAGBOT that will do document grading and then how we can actually use corrections to improve it. So I'm going to go over to a notebook. I'm going to create a RAGBOT here. So, you know, I'm just going to index a few blog posts. Um, so that all ran, and here's my RAGBOT. It's super simple, it doesn't even use Langchain. This is just kind of raw GPT-4.0. Um, I'm doing a document retrieval step. Uh, I set my system prompt up here. This is like a standard RAG prompt to your helpful assistant. Use the following docs to answer the question. That's all we're gonna do here. And let's go ahead and run that once on a simple kind of input question about the React agent. So this is a good question to ask because one of our documents in particular uh, this guy right here uh, is a blog post about agents. So that went ahead and ran. Now we go to Langsmith and um, we can see we have a new project with one trace. Here we go. We can look at the trace. We can see it contains retrieve docs and invoke our LLM. So that's great. Now let's say I want to build an evaluator for this project. So I can go to add rules. I'm going to call this recall. I want, to I want to perform a recall check on the retrieved documents. I go to online evaluator, create evaluator, look at our suggested prompts, and I see this one for document relevance recalls. So this is pretty nice. And I'm gonna go ahead and use GPT-4.0. Uh, it's a better LLM for grading. And you're gonna see a few things here that are kind of nice. So this is basically setting up an evaluator that'll run every time my project runs. And this is really nice if you have a, you know, an app in production and you want to, for example, grade as responses, flag things you know, that are egregiously wrong and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is this mapping allows me to take the outputs of my chain and map it into the inputs for this prompt. So it's pretty cool. So I can see my chain has these two outputs, answer and context. Context is just the retrieved docs, which I pass through. So there we go. Question, just input question. So now my two in, my inputs and outputs are defined they map into my prompt uh, right here. So facts, question. Now what's gonna happen here in the prompt, <clears throat> this is gonna be grading relevance recall. And so, you know, I'm getting a question, I'm giving it a set of facts, and basically I'm asking a score of one says any of the facts is relevant to the question. Um, so again, this is kind of a recall test. So recall just basically means um, is, do the documents contain uh, facts that are relevant to my question. Now, it can include lots of things that are not relevant, but as long as there's a kernel of relevance, I'm gonna score that as one. So that's the main idea here. And now I'm gonna do something that is kind of nice. I'm gonna use this corrections as few shot examples. So this is gonna create a placeholder for me that I'm gonna use later after I correct my evaluator. And so what this does, this basically just sets up a placeholder right here that contains, I'll call this, this is basically a set of facts question, reasoning, and score. So what's going on here? Well, fact and question are just two of the things that are input to my prompt. So that's kind of, these are gonna be uh, provided by the user. 
<clears throat> reasoning is going to be an explanation for the corrected score that I'm going to give it. So these are going to come from the human feedback. And this is going to be basically a few shot example that I'm going to tell the grader to use in its consideration of the score. So what I'm going to do, I can go ahead up here and I can say here are several examples and explanations to calibrate your scoring. So what's really happening here, if we kind of step back, is I'm basically creating a placeholder where I can incorporate human corrections into my prompt. That's really all that's going on here. And what's really nice is, so this is all here, I can go ahead and name this output score recall. Let's just change this just so it's a little bit easier in our logging later on. Um, now what I can do is I can use this preview button to see how this is going to look and make sure everything works. So this is pretty cool. This just injects an example um, kind of facts, uh, question, reasoning, score. So this is this is just like a placeholder for what the user will input. These, of course, will be input by me later. And then here is the actual input for this particular chain example. So this is just confirming that everything's hooked together correctly. Um, so that's cool. And I'm going to go ahead and continue. So that's our recall grader. I'm going to save that. Let's add one more. We'll call this precision. Great. I'm going to say online evaluator. I'm going to use GPT-40 again. Try a suggested prompt. Document relevance precision. And again, I'm just going to change my, my uh, key name for the output score. I'll again use these few shot examples. Let's just kind of format these slightly based upon how we'd like them to look. So this is nice. Good. Precision. Question facts. That's fine. Cool. And again, we'll just instruct. Here are some examples to calibrate your grading. Cool. So that's all that's going on here. And let's go ahead and do the final piece here. So we have to hook up. Basically, here's our chain outputs. Context are the documents that were retrieved. Here's the input question. And we are done. So this is our precision grader. And we're all set. So now we have two graders attached to uh, our project. I go back to my project. Now I'm just going to mock. Let's say I'm a user playing with this app. Let's just go ahead and ask a couple questions. So how does React Asian work? Um, and I'll go ahead and ask another, a few other relevant questions. What's the difference between React and reflection approaches? Um, what are the types of agent memory or LLM memory? Um, cool, I'll just run these. Uh, what is memory and retrieval model in the generative agent simulation? Run that. Cool. So we've just gone ahead and ran a few different questions against our data set. <laughs> Very nice. So now what you're going to see is these are all now logged to our project. And over time, we're going to see feedback rolling from our evaluator. So again, what's happened is I set up a project. I've added two precision and recall document evaluators to my project. These will grade the retrieved documents for precision and recall relative to the question. And I'm just going to go ahead and let those evaluators run on my uh, four new example inputs. Okay, great. So what we can see is that now I have online evaluator feedback that's rolled in. Um, and these are against my four input questions. This is pretty cool. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and review. So let's just kind of move this over. And my outputs contain the answer and the retrieved documents in these contexts. So what's pretty nice is I can go ahead and quickly review this and say, hey, do I agree with my evaluator or not? So let's look, the question was React. Uh, how does a React agent work? And let's look at my documents briefly. I can even just copy over React. Maybe that could be kind of make it quick. So I can see this first document does mention React twice. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty reasonable. The second one, uh, yep, this is definitely correct. 
Um, again, third one looks right. Again, talking about the React kind of uh, action, uh, observation, and thought loop. Um, and this final one uh, does not actually mention React. So in this particular case, I look at the scoring. The precision is zero. The, fee the recall is one. I think that's about right because this fourth document does not mention React at all. So I'm happy with this. We close this down. Let's look at the second one. In this particular case, it's talking about React and Reflection. So two different approaches. What's the difference, right? So here, okay. So the first one clearly talks about React. Um, that's good. The second one also clearly talks about React. Uh, cool. The third one does not, but it mentions Reflection. Okay. So we can look a little bit at this last document. Now you can see that it mentions IRCOT, kind of a complementary approach to React. It mentions React. It doesn't say too much about how it really works. It says it combines uh, COT prompting with queries, in this case to Wikipedia. So, you know, I can be a little bit cr critical here. And what I'm gonna say is, here I'm gonna say the precision is not one. And here's how I'm gonna do this. So I can basically make a correction to my grader. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna say the grade is zero. And what I'm going to tell it, now this is really nice, I can actually give it my feedback explicitly. So what I'm going to say is, the final document does mention React, but it doesn't actually discuss how React works in any level of detail, as opposed to the other docs, which discuss the React reasoning loop more specifically. Cool. Um, so for this reason, I do not give it a precision score of one. That's it. So I go ahead and update that. Cool, so now we basically said, look, I I consider this last document to be a little bit of false positive. I get it says the word React, that's probably why it was retrieved. It doesn't really talk about like the functioning of the React agent in, in any level of detail. And so, you know, again, this is just an example of the kind of feedback. You so we can go back to our evaluators. We can look at the precision evaluator. We can go down and see this few shot data set now and see that actually includes our correction um, and our explanation. Let's have a look at the preview and see how this is going to be formatted. So here's some examples of Calibate your grading. Um, here's a whole bunch of facts. <clears throat> um, cool. Here is the question. The final document does mention React, but doesn't specifically discuss how it works. Um, so I do not give it a precision. Um, I do not give it a precision score of one, precision zero. Okay, cool. So it looks like it sucked in our feedback nicely. It's now part of the few shot examples. So that's great. Um, that's included in our evaluation prompt. Um, now let's go ahead and check. So um, let's rerun on this question and see if our example kind of was correctly captured by our evaluator. Great, so we can see our evaluator just ran. So again, here is the question we asked, what's the difference between React and Reflection approaches? Our scoring now is precision zero, recall one. Now look at the last time we asked this question, what's the difference between React and Reflection? With our correction, if you look at our scoring here, precision, we corrected it to be zero, and we provide that as feedback. Now the evaluator is correctly calibrated. It scores it as zero and one. Of course, look, this is a case of overfitting. I completely understand that. We've literally added this particular example to the few shot prompt, but it's a case where we can actually highlight that performing feedback and corrections, rolling that into your evaluator's few shot examples can actually correctly calibrate it to produce scores that are more aligned with what you want. So it's a really useful tool for building LLM and judge evaluators that adhere to the type of uh, kind of scoring rubric that you actually want. And this is really useful because oftentimes it's tricky to actually just prompt it to produce the correct uh, kind of scoring, giving it specific examples from human corrections 
uh, is really powerful. And so that's the big insight here. It's a really useful feature. Um, and particularly because elements judge evaluators are so effective and they're you know increasingly widely used, the ability to incorporate feedback really easily is, is just a really powerful and nice tool. So I encourage you to play with it. Thanks.